Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Sirens of the Sea, our niche challenge where we are attempting to turn our nichelings into beautiful, koi-like mermaids who swim out in the open seas, using their harmonious song to enrapture nichelings to serve them, and searching out fantastically strong mates who will help them to conquer the beaches and the waterways. However, if you guys have been with us the last few episodes, uh, conquering the water ways has been proving to be quite difficult since we are still working on opening up the water genes and at this point quite frankly still working on just trying to survive honestly we started to do pretty well we had a few servants we started enrapturing some of the wandering males so that they could serve as our uh, as our servants like sand dollar down here and then we ended up getting attacked by so many rogues we had so many rogues suddenly come and join Join the family tree. They left their children with us. They slowed us down. They used up our siren's precious energy at being able to defend themselves, at being able to spend their time trying to search out the secrets of the ocean and trying to have healthy children. <laughs> And we have clung to the very edge of survival since then. The sirens already struggle because when their male children become old enough, their male children become mature and leave the tribe. Kind of the way that lion cubs, when they are males, will leave their family pride and roam away. That's what happens to the sirens, we say, on a biological level. There's something about them and there's something about the mysterious song that all of our beautiful blue gemstoned females have that it just makes it so when their male children come of age, they just have to leave the tribe. They have this irresistible lure to go out and to explore and to try to find their own way in the world, hunting for something that at the moment doesn't yet have a name. I almost wonder if the sirens became strong enough that their sons could possibly also learn to sing by having water body and gills and fishing tail and a few other aquatic traits if our males might actually be able to stay with us. Hmm, we'll have to see about the future, but for now it's pretty much like a female only challenge tribe and we're trying to get into the water. Just, it's been awful getting attacked by so many rogues we have struggled again and again and again just trying to gain a little bit of a foothold of survival and we haven't been able to do that because of the rogues and as you can see the bones of our fallen are all around us so it hit me though this is the perfect excuse and the perfect reason for why our females might flee to the sea the land holds too many enemies, especially the chaotic enemies of, I kind of want to call them like the hyena tribe, the rogues who are impervious. They cannot listen to the song that the sirens sing. They are able to resist the lure of the song and we're going to have everybody start gathering food uh, who is not like story critical for just a moment. All right, there you go, Sand Dollar. Uh oh, is that a rogue? Oh, no, it's just Harpu. And Harpu is actually, like, distantly related to us. So it's okay if he shows up. All right, we'll try to get some food there. River's going to come down here and try to get some food. But it occurred to me the reason that we might struggle so terribly much with the rogues, who I'm going to call, like, the hyena tribe, just because they remind me of hyenas for some reason. Well, no, they don't remind me of hyenas because they're actually female-led. So we need a good name for the rogue tribe. Um... The, the not the tricksters because that's like ta ta but basically i feel like the rogues are like a, another subspecies of nicheling and they are impervious to the songs that the sirens sing they cannot be enraptured and they have a far more aggressive uh kind of chaotic personality and chaotic biology and that's why we're trying to avoid the rogues but to get away from them i think <gasps> to get away from them <laughs> Oh my gosh! Quick, Mace! Quick, defend! Oh my goodness, I think that these girls are both pregnant with rogue children. That's right! Oh my gosh, this is a travesty. A travesty, I say! And we're so hungry, we need to eat! Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And Kakomi, she's also under threat of this rogue getting it too close. Can she possibly- there we go. So she is pregnant with her mate again. We're going to go ahead. Mace has destroyed that rogue. She has caused him to die. However, as you guys can see, 
the rogues are just relentlessly wearing down the sirens and almost trying to like conquer us through genetic takeover. And that won't do because any children that are born from rogues, we're going to say, have no ability to sing. They cannot sing the way that the sirens can, and so they cannot inherit the siren bloodline. So what we'll do is any rogue born children will usually be uh, kind of like kicked out of the tribe, even when they're very young, because the sirens are losing their temper. And I am going to make the sirens a little bit more merciless than any of our previous tribes. Hang in there, guys. I'm not going to torment the babies. We would just like banish them at a very young age, uh, which is still really mean. However, the rogue born children, I hate to suffer for the, the crimes of their, their father. So what we'll do is if we have a nicheling who is a servant class, one of the wanderers we have taken into the tribe who doesn't have any siren blood in them, then they can take in the rogue children. So if we have a wanderer, then the wanderer can take in the rogue children and they can make the rogue children servants as well. If we do not have a wanderer and the wanderer has not been having any babies, then we cannot take in um, the rogue children. So that's going to be, I think, a good rule to kind of follow moving forward in figuring out what we do with all of these rogue babies. And also, it's a great reason and a great motivation for why we might have all of our siren females start leaving and kind of coming up along the edges of the sea. They might come out to this little island. They might start trying to find food from amongst the crabbits and the crabs that they can locate along all of the beaches. And they might just try staying away from the mainland because that is where uh, the hyena, I gotta come up with a better name. So help me come up with a better name for the rogue group. But that is where the rogue groups wander and they want to get away from them. So look, this spot has a wonderful little berry bush. It is surrounded by some beaches and that would also explain why it's so important for the sirens to enrapture so many males so that they can be defended. They can have a line of defense because even the strongest female, even if she is not, if she's not pregnant, could fall prey to the terrible, terrible rogues and uh, why we would want so many servants because the servants and the enraptured at least could go on to land and they could search deep in here and if a servant ends up pregnant with a rogue child, it's not as big a deal. So there is the huge story arc that I was kind of trying to figure out what to do with with the sirens and now that we've gotten that out of the way let's go ahead and focus on the important things like food we have Torrent over here who is having children with Kokomi we're excited about that because they both have recessive webbed legs and fishing tail and they are actually healthy uh, as mates and then we're also trying to become mates with Kier Kier over here who we are not controlling, but we're trying to become mates with him because he has those beautiful webbed hind legs that, that we really like. And actually, Fulo, who's unfortunately very sick, I think that she's actually rogueborn. So we're going to say that that rule about rogueborn not inheriting the siren's abilities is going to start now. So everybody who's currently born will just keep going with the direction we were going with. So I think Fulo is definitely rogueborn, if I remember correctly. Yeah, she's the child of a rogue male, um, and so is Kovoy. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kind of just say from this generation forward. That's where the rogue rule of not inheriting the siren's blue stones and their ability to sing begins. Uh, but Fulo would actually be a good mate for Kyokir as well because she actually has fishing tail, you can see back there, and one webbed paw. So we might look into that. I think, yeah, she's got the common cold, so I don't even know if she'll live long enough to have a child. But I know that Garnet is quite interested in this male. So let's go ahead and have her become pregnant. And then I'm going to have Fulo jump over here and work on trying to gather food. I'm going to have Garnet scooch over here. We have Harpu dashing around the place. We have Sand Dollar, who is now a um, now an enraptured male. And he is actually going to help us out with gathering enough food to try to help the tribe survive. There we go. And then over here, we have got Kokomi. And she... She's going to protect her baby... And she's going to stay near her ideal mate, Torrent. So unfortunately, Kukir, uh, who... 
has recessive webbed hind legs and fishing tail. He'll be a good male for us to send our future females to try to find, but he is not going to be the one we are currently looking for. And let me make sure Kokomi, yeah, Kokomi has all of the traits that we want uh, in her mutation. So does Garnet. And we might as well just go ahead and give Fulo some of the traits that I really wanted to have, like nimble fingers for cracking open. Those clam shells are going to become a lot more important now that our females are beginning to think they should flee to the sea to get away from everyone. And I very much agree with many of you, including Rachel Lee, who I just wanted to say thank you so much for leaving such a fantastic Siren of the Seas name list. I really love your idea as well. And many people have had this idea too, and I agree with it, of making their eyes blue to match the sea or purple for beautiful gemstones or green for seaweed. And we are going to be working on that in the future too. And I do want to unlock Toxic Body to see if we can wiggle in some very interesting coat colors at some point as well. So we're going to be playing with making some beautiful koi mermaids, just we kind of have to help them survive until then. So let's get to it. All right, so what do we have? What do we have here? Oh, 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 what? <laughs> we just unlocked a new gene to mutate. Oh, and hello, little Cory. So little Cory has been born. She has recessive poison fangs. And let's see. Oh, her fertility is really bad, though. And she's got a lot of stealth, but nothing else that we were hoping for. However, she's a female, so we get to keep her. Huzzah! Huzzah! That makes me very happy, actually. I think that was the only female we had who was currently on a nest. Um, and indeed, it was. So let's go ahead and clear out the little notifications. We have 12 food. We definitely need more than that. We'll have little Kukir step over. Uh, his dad's kind of being a little bit of a jerk and stealing. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to do some fishing. Uh, have we already done enough fishing to like unlock most of the mutations? I think we have. Hang on. Uh, do we have fishing tail? We sure enough do have fishing tail, which we definitely want. We need to unlock platypus beak. Unlocking cracker jaw would be great for so for getting those clam shells, and then unlocking um gills would be amazing we need to do that from swimming and water body which is from swimming okay so we need to work on all those things less important that we work on um less important that we work on fish at the moment unless we can actually hunt those fish all right so what i want to do and there's too many stray males around here harpu what are your genes he is short-sighted and he doesn't really, oh, and he's actually got hemophilia and everything. So we're going to have Garnet go ahead. And even though we're low on food, we're going to sing our song because Harpu has some great claws and he can actually do some fishing. So she is going to enrapture Harpu. And there we go. That is another choice of what to do with rogue children. If we don't, if we don't choose to banish them, uh, right away, they can indeed become enraptured males. And if they're just like, if they're strong, if they have strength and there's some way that they could probably serve us, then we'll enrapture them. And if they're not very strong or they might have some genes that we actually want to mix with the servant class, then we'll have the servants go ahead and pick them up. And if they're not strong and they don't have any genes we want, then I think the sirens will be one of the most merciless tribes that I have. One section of the sirens, at least. Keep in mind the servant class will probably be very very generous and try to protect the babies perhaps maybe they won't be but i'm going to be a little bit more strict than usual and i just want to warn you guys of that because a lot of you get upset if i purposely feed nichelings toxic berries or do anything that might come off as really harsh or cruel <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit more of a stern strict line like that in this tribe and i just want you guys to be ready for that all right, so Harpu is gonna go and he is going to help to collect up some food. There is a ton of food over here. So help me, Kia Kia. If you try to go and eat that, I am going to be very cranky at you. <laughs> Do not eat my food. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna have Hungry Mama Garnet. Like, well, I don't, I can't have her. Is there a bird overhead? There's no bird overhead. And I wonder, Hungry Mama Garnet needs to mate. Okay, I'm gonna have her step this way, mate again. <gasps> Duke Van Kier? Are you a rogue? I don't remember having a Duke Van Kier, a completely blind nicheling. That doesn't sound like a very good idea. Uh, and then the other thing is to start a servant class, you have to have one female to start the servant class. I can't take in the like wandering males, I don't think. Because, yeah, I'm going to say I can't. I, well, should I be able I mean, what kind of servant would he make if he can't do anything? 
Um, basically, my idea is to start a servant class. You have to start with a wandering female. And my reasoning there is that males who are invited into the tribe by sirens would become enraptured. So either the, si the sirens can only either enrapture males or they can mate with them and not enrapture them. So there's only two options. If we want to bring in a wandering male, I need a servant class female to be able to do that first. And I feel like that makes sense to me because the sirens lure would be very powerful. It's like kind of all or nothing. You know what I mean? All right, so we'll work on that. I think I'm gonna have little Tata Lee uh, go ahead, my little trickster boy, and wiggle his way up here. We just had our food stolen from us by Duke Kirvan. That makes me a little annoyed. I'm not gonna let them steal the other half. All right, so Mace is gonna come over. I'll probably have her destroy this bush as well. And we might as well enrapture Duke Von here just so he'll stop stealing our food. But then we also have to give him food. However, I was thinking he could possibly guard our babies. Um, gonna have to think about it. All right, Kukui is hungry, so I'll send her over here and then she's going to come and start talking with her sister Riloko who has been having quite the nice time with this tree and River is going to come over and get some bunny meat here but Riloko has been thinking about uh, how important it is to stay near this tree. She thinks this is a great spot. However, Kukui and Mace want to start moving down to the ocean so that they can have more of a defensive uh, shelter from the rogue males who have been like harassing this tribe for so long. And I think that makes a lot of sense too. All right, and Fulo, I'm going to keep over here. I don't think she really, she just has like a webbed paw and a deformed paw. I kind of want her to swim around. She's not going to age up for quite a while. I, I honestly don't know if she's going to make it to adulthood and be able to try to mate with Kukier. But I'm going to keep her there just to try. All right. And then we've got quite a bit of food with Sand Dollar here helping out with the tree. So he's, he's a good enraptured male and he's also going to be very, very protective of any of the females he's nearby. All right. So is that everybody? Yes, that is everybody. Next day. Why am I not surprised to hear that there's a predator somewhere nearby with a baby, no less. There's a predator with a baby. A useful thing if we had a servant class who could possibly breed us up some defenders. Not so useful if we're just trying to kind of like live out a peaceful life. <gasps> no, I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I think Kakomi heard the predator and freaked out and accidentally hurt Torin. Oh gosh, she would feel really badly about that. But we do need to have a baby and this may not be the safest place to have a baby. And Torin now only has a few days left to live. Oh, Kakomi. I think she would feel so badly about what she's done. But we need to possibly get away. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to think about that. Let's see. Where did that blind male go? Where did he wander off to? Huh. No idea where he wandered off to. Harpu is with us, though. Um, and Harpu has hemophilia. He's got the ability to do some fishing and also some defense. So we'll have him rush to Kakomi since he's a good defender. He might have heard what was going on over here after all. So he's going to rush over here. Mace is super strong. I'm going to have her destroy this toxic berry bush. Uh, and I don't think she wants to have her rogue baby really follow her around. I feel like Mace is very upset about this that whole situation. She is ready to kind of move on when it comes to rogue babies. Here's a, a like handsome male who she could possibly have a proper child with. And like I said, the sirens are just going to be very strict about their bloodline. It's not the nicest thing in the world. And I am 100% comfortable in admitting that. But that's kind of where our story is, is headed at this point. All right, I think Garnet's going to come down. Oh, and we have to banish Tatali now because he's all grown up. Okay, hang in there, Tatali. He does indeed carry the siren line. I think he is also rogueborn, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and Kukui also has a rogueborn child. So she'll come over and perform the honors. All right, Tatali is headed out. We no, we are not going to let you eat the berries. Okay, and we're going to grab some food. And then, yeah, I think what we'll do is Mace will leave behind her rogue-born child. And then she is going to start moving towards the uh, waterways to do some exploring over there. And just start trying to figure out what's there. And then Fulo, I'll have move around. I don't think she's going to live long enough to have her breed the way I was hoping. All right, and River is going to come and check the river. Whoops, I think I might be drowning her in the river. And let's see, I'll have Garnet go ahead 
Should she have her baby here? Maybe, because we're right next to a waterway. But I feel like she might want to go over and have her baby next to Reed Loco. So, hmm. I'll have her have it here, because I think she might stick near where her nest is. Alright, so it's a little bit complicated, but bear with me, guys. Oh, here comes the rain. A little bit complicated, but bear with me as we start to really wiggle out the explanations behind the depth of the story that we've got going. Here comes a female Berlina. She's getting ridiculously close to us. Little Kukir has a natural affinity and taste for fish. And Kokomi is going to swim across the way to safety with her sisters right away. So she's going to fly down here. We have got Harpu trying to defend the females, keeping an eye, also aware that they are hungry and giving them a taste of fish. So I'm going to clear his spot so he can work on fishing there. And now we have a fleet of babies. So right here we have a little male named Nuro, who is born from Garnet and Kirkir. Let's see what's happening. So let's see, medium body, crocodile. We're just not getting the inheritance of those swimming genes the way I wanted. So that's gonna be harder than I thought for Garnet, but at least we're, we're kind of getting them out there with Kukir. Uh, and then we have Mila. <laughs> who's actually a really fascinating rogue-born daughter. And I think banishing a daughter would be a little difficult for the sirens, but they would be willing to follow through on it if it meant protecting the siren tribe. Hmm, Mila, what to do with you? I need a wanderer. I want to find a wanderer so bad. All right, and I really want Fulo to maybe have a chance to try to mate with Kukir. Just to see. Just to see. Um, Here, I'm going to have Garnet maybe clear the way like clear this spot come over to her son Fulo can jump over here and meet with them dang it it didn't take all right and then mace i think mace is intrigued by her rogueborn daughter but there's nothing in her that calls out to the siren there's no siren inside of mila so there's no siren that calls out to mace to make her loyal to the baby and want to stay with it so we're gonna have her continue on and start working her way towards the sea we're gonna have Cory, who is actually, uh, she she is, I believe. Let me double check. Cory, what's your lineage? Cory and Kikir. Yeah, so Cory is is siren born and siren raised, and so we'll have her slip into the waterways uh, when she's old enough. I just realized, <laughs> and she'll start swimming around, and she might start collecting up some of the clam shells and other things for food. And I think we just unlocked Cracker Jaw, a personal favorite of mine because I find it so ridiculously useful, a nice passive way to gain the ability to crack open nuts and clams. But I know one that drives many of you guys up a wall. Uh, so I will use it with caution and then we're gonna grab these berries before Tatali does I think he's actually trapped there trying to eat the berries, but because he has double no paw He can't which is kind of sad and then we're gonna have Kukui go ahead and try to give birth to um, To her rogue born child and then we will figure out what to do with that one All right. Meanwhile River is at the end of her life. However for the sake of her sisters she is definitely going to come down here and kind of scout out the very edges of the beach territory and hear some clams. I think the ladies, they're, they're going to feel the call of the sea for safety, but then it's going to turn out to be for something a little bit more. So let's see. Can you destroy that for food just in case? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, let's have the last of the rogue born child, children born, and then we are going to start wiggling the sirens down to the sea. Oh no, our boy! No, Kukir! Left alone to try to defend yourself at such a young age. Oh gosh, can you do any good damage? Oh gosh! Hello? <laughs> choices, choices? Hello, new, new Dukta? Oh my goodness. So there's a male named Nudukta here with um, a spiky body and recessive poison fangs, which again is like driving me up a wall because it would be great. I think I have another female with recessive poison fangs somewhere and that would be really fun to have. And actually spiky body would be fantastic if we could breed it into like our servants and then have like a defending class of servants instead of just enraptured. 
Enraptured are kind of a way just to prevent nichelings who otherwise would be a drain on resources from bugging us, but it'd be interesting if we had a servant class because then they could breed up spikes and we might end up with a soldier class who had free will instead of being enraptured. Ah, oh, there's going to be so many layers of story to this. I just can't believe it. Um, he does have fishing tail though, so there's a chance we might have a fishing tail child. Um, and webbed hind legs are pretty strong. I don't know. Okay. Do you feel- okay, we'll see which one she becomes pregnant with first. Well, that guy left, and it looks like Fulo, surprisingly, cannot become pregnant because there's just not enough good genes. Fooey, that's going to make things a little trickier. And then I think Kukir, you know, he's a young male, might try to defend himself. Oh gosh, and then Torin is coming to his son's side. <gasps> yes! Okay, quick, quick, quick! I want that food! <laughs> Garnet, don't let the boys eat it! We need that! We desperately need that food! Don't let him get it, Garnet! Don't let him get it! Oh, and now this male is back! What the heck? <laughs> All right, and Kakomi. Oh, there's an, there's that blind male. He might be worth enrapturing so that we can keep him. Uh, Nuro, were you the child of a? No, Nuro was the child of that one wandering male who was going all about the place. All right, well we'll figure out what to do with him in just a second. And then here is little Kosi, who was also unfortunately sickly, so she would be banished pretty soon in here too. I wish we had a wandering female. That would be so cool. And River has passed away. So yeah, I think that the call of the sea is what is going to actually end up saving us from all of the genes that have been just pouring in from these naughty rogues leaving their children behind. And we're going to say that they are kind of another species that's trying to kind of take out the sirens and eliminate their genes through genetic takeover of making us have all these sick babies. Um, is Nu Dukta worth enrapturing? Is he worth enrapturing? I don't think so, but I mean, better that than letting a sick nicheling wander all over the place and possibly get us sick. So you know what? Uh, we're gonna have Kokomi enrapture him. I wasn't going to, but I think we're gonna go ahead and allow Kokomi to enrapture him. And we are going to actually send him across the way as well to help gather uh, different bits of food and to help defend ourselves. Uh, yeah, we'll have him gather that and then no, I put him next to all my other nichelings and he's sick. Why did I do that? I wasn't thinking. Okay. I love the strategy. I love making mistakes because it just means the strategy of everything is going to get even more interesting. All right, we'll scooch you over. Kokomi will come over here and Mila. I wish I had a wandering female so that I could keep little Mila. Um, I think that as long as she's a child, Kokomi will allow her to stay near. But when she becomes an adult, she is not a siren. And so she will be, and she's also kind of like a shame, a shameful reminder of the terrible rogues who are trying to take us over. So she would probably try to get rid of her. All right. Which is really sad. I'm sorry. All right. And Ricolo. Ricolo and Tatali. I think Tatali is your son, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're really closely related. Here's another male we could enrapture. I'm going to just so he'll stop causing us all this trouble. And then he can kind of work on just clearing some of our spots out of the way. There's Torrent rushing by. Uh, I saw one of the healthy males nearby and I might want to mate with him. All right, and Sand Dollar will gather up some food from here. And then Cory, I think, is going to follow her Aunt Macy. And they're going to start working their way along towards the sea. And we'll start getting our, our way down there. So it's a little bit of a mess right now, as you can tell, with so many different nichelings falling all over each other, enraptured falling all over each other. Somebody just ate all of that berry and a meat, which makes me very cranky. But thank you guys. This was really hard to figure out how we were going to set it up so that we have sirens, so that what we do with the rogue children that I'm happy with, uh, and then how to handle the servant class. So we really want our first proper like uh, servant class with a new female who can be brought in and we're gonna just keep enrapturing and start more aggressively using our new enraptured males for defense and for collecting food so whew, i'll see you guys next time bye bye